Today we're rendering beef tallow, and I'm going to go over seven great practical uses for tallow. Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Karen, and my husband Dan and I are becoming as self-sufficient as we possibly can before we retire. One of the things that we want to do is eliminate as much food waste as we possibly can. Last weekend we smoked a brisket and there was a lot of fat left over from preparing that brisket for the smoker. So in this video we are going to render beef tallow, talk about how long it can last, and then I'm going to give you seven great practical uses for tallow. It's not all just for food. I ended up getting three to four pounds of usable beef fat to make tallow, but you can normally get beef fat trimmings from any meat counter at a grocery store or from your butcher. Since it is considered a waste product, some will give it to you for free, others may charge a low cost, uh, my meat counter at the grocery charged 99 cents per pound the last time I bought beef fat there. The first thing we're going to do is cut this fat up into smaller pieces. The smaller the pieces, the faster it will render. I'm going to be letting this render overnight and all day tomorrow while I'm at work, so I'm not too concerned about the speed of it right now, but you could use a meat grinder to grind this up finely, or even maybe have your butcher grind it up for you, and that would help it to render faster. Now, I will say it's easier to cut up if it's been in the refrigerator, and if you're going to use a meat grinder, you wanna stick it in the freezer for about an hour so that it doesn't gum up in your grinder. I'm also removing any large areas of meat that I see, a little bit of meat is okay, but the more meat scrap that you have in there with the fat, the beefier the tallow will be. And if that's your preference, then go ahead and leave that meat on. I'm also removing any areas of the fat that look a little bit questionable to me. So after I cut this up, I added it into the slow cooker. I put it on the longest setting, which is 10 hours on low. And then tomorrow morning before I go to work, I will reset the slow cooker and do 10 more hours. You could also render this in a stock pot on top of the stove and it would render faster that way too. Probably take around four hours or so depending on how much fat you have. The aim of rendering fat is to get the fat part to separate from all of the solid stuff and then strain off all of the solids and you will have a more pure fat. If you want a more purified, odorless, really white tallow, let's say you're going to be making some candles or making some soap with your tallow, then you would want a more purified version. So if I were doing that, I would add a little bit of water to the slow cooker so that the fat wouldn't brown and burn. And then I would also add two to three tablespoons of salt because salt helps to pull out impurities and things in that fat. But I'm gonna be using this batch of tallow for cooking. So that doesn't matter to me and I'm not gonna do that this time. When I came home from work the next day, this is what I had. Now I have already removed a whole jar quite a bit earlier so that I could show you what it looks like after it's cooled down. I could render this a little more but I'm going to go ahead and call this good because I can make some great cracklings out of the solids that are left. So now it is time to remove all of the solids. I have lined this strainer with cheesecloth and that will help to strain out even the more fine solids. And don't throw away those solids because they can be used to make some delicious beef cracklings, which I'm gonna be doing at the end of this video if you wanna hang out and see. So I'm just gonna let this drain for a little bit. Once we're done straining, we wanna jar it up in some clean jars that have airtight lids. 
This is a good use for canning lids that you've already used once. Go ahead and use those on your tallow jars. Or if you have saved something like spaghetti jars or pickle jars um, that have the, the lid with the rubber seal around it, this is also a good use for those jars you've been saving. But you do need that airtight seal, especially if you're not going to refrigerate or freeze the tallow. So how long does tallow last? Tallow can last several months if you keep it in a dark spot, say in the cupboard. So it is shelf stable, but it will last longer if you put it in the refrigerator and it, it can last indefinitely in an airtight container in the freezer. In fact, some people will freeze tallow in ice cube trays and then they can just grab a cube whenever they need to use some of their tallow in their cooking. But ultimately, how long it lasts will depend on the quality of fat that you are using and also your personal method or process of rendering the fat. So I can't really put a number on that for you, but as with anything else, you want to make sure you do the smell test and then also look for any other signs of spoilage before you use it. So this is what it looks like after it has cooled. Your degree of hard or soft will vary, especially if you are using fat from the butcher, since you don't know what part of the body that fat is coming from. Fat around the organs or leaf fat will end up with a hard tallow. And in general, fat from any other part of the body will produce a softer tallow and maybe you'll have somewhere in between if you've gotten your fat from the butcher because you don't know how much of it is the leaf fat and how much of it is the other fat. So now that we have our tallow, how can we use it? The first great practical use for tallow is something I alluded to earlier and that would be candle making, soap making, and even for skin care. A balm made from tallow is really good for irritated skin. There are many recipes out there for balm made from tallow, but in general, you put it on the stove and you heat it until it's just melted. You add some essential oils and then you can put it in containers. And there are lots of places online that will show you how to make candles and soap from tallow also. The second and most obvious use for tallow is in cooking. The great thing is that tallow has a high smoke point. You would have to get it up to 400 degrees or maybe even a little more before it would start smoking. So think sauteing, searing, and deep fat frying are all really good uses for tallow and a lot healthier for you than using seed oils. So any place that you would use oils to fry something, you can use tallow instead. Another great use in cooking is if you make savory pies, like you make chicken pot pies or beef pot pies, using tallow in the crust instead of something like butter gives you a really super flaky crust and is absolutely delicious with that savory middle. And if you rendered your tallow to be a little bit more pure and have a very light beef taste, you can use it in making other kinds of pies and pastries as well. Third great use for tallow is in preserving and polishing wood. You can take some tallow and mix in a few drops of lemon oil and you will have a nice polish for your furniture. So you would rub it in and then take a clean cloth and buff it. The fourth great use for tallow is in leather conditioning. So just like with the furniture, it will keep leather from cracking and it will keep it supple and soft. So try some tallow to condition leather. The fifth great practical use is an interesting one. You can use tallow as a fire starter. 
So if you just take a, a small square of cotton cloth you put a dollop of tallow in the middle, then you bring that up and tie it with a cotton string. It makes an excellent fire starter. Number six is with mechanical issues. If you are in a pinch and something on your machinery or your tool um, or a gear is stuck, you can use tallow as a lubricant. And the last practical use is in rust prevention. It can help prevent rust on anything metal. So if you have tools that you're going to be storing for a long time, you can rub them with tallow, wipe them off, and then they will, should not develop any rust. So great for that too. And there are so many more uses for it. I encourage you to go online and look up uses for tallow. Do you have something else that you use tallow for or another great use for tallow? Please leave it in the comments below. If you are still here and watching, I appreciate you. And now I need to go and make some beef cracklins with those leftover beef solids. In fact, I'm going to end this video with making cracklins so you have a fabulous week. And I will be back on Saturday with a weight loss video update. See you then.